Hi there, team, and welcome to another update on the volcanic situation going on in Iceland's Reykjanes Peninsula. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Thanks for joining me. Uh, to be honest, I really thought there was going to be some sort of an eruptive event that took place this past week while I was gone on vacation. I was ready with my little mobile setup uh, if anything were to take place. But lo and behold, Iceland was pretty quiet during that past week, and I think we're well past the time when most people would have expected an eruption. And um, I wanted to put together a quick update for this week since it's been a while since I've done one of these, even though there's not a whole lot to report, but we'll go through the information and the data as best we can. Again, it is Monday, March 31st, as I'm recording this. Um, it's actually dark in Iceland right now. Uh, so if we go forward, on the webcam, it's not much to see, but I scrolled it back a bit there, a few hours just to let you see what the latest was there on the webcam and the views in Iceland. You can see the Sunnukur uh, crater road just sort of outgassing and some of the water vapor coming off there. But for now, we're in a, 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 a strange quiet period where you know, we're just kind of waiting for those first signals that that flurry of earthquakes or some sort of signal that is a sure sign that magma is on its way up to the surface. And thus far, we haven't really seen that. But let's go ahead and run through the data in this brief update. So there was a Met Office update from last week on the 25th. Um, not a whole lot to report here. Basically, the, the highlights here was that magma accumulation continues, but the rate of uplift has slowed so we're not seeing the uplift at the gps stations um you know that that movement upward has slowed down compared to what we saw over time and that's usually a signal that the rocks have reached their elastic limit that they really can't stretch anymore typically that's a sign that the next step would be you know breaking the rock and producing an eruption but we just quite haven't got there yet for whatever reason uh, they talk about the most likely scenario being either an intrusion or an eruption. So let's also remember that while an eruption is the most likely end to this current scenario, it is possible that the magma, that pressurized magma in the subsurface in that magma storage zone, you know, either through an earthquake and a crack opening up or just the pressure itself, the magma will take the easiest path and it doesn't always have to be a path to the surface. So it might be something where the magma can fill some space or move along some fracture in the subsurface it might do that and by doing that and having in more of an intrusion versus an eruption or what we call an extrusion uh, that might delay you know the the any sort of eruptive activity even further but we're likely to see something between uh silingerfelt and stora stokefelt those two hills just to the east of the blue lagoon and the power plant um they report that seismic activity is gradually increased over the past few weeks and that the pressure therefore near the eruption site is increasing the eruption could begin with very little warning that's what we saw in the last eruption and their hazard map basically stays the same um, they still talk about that the volume of magma has never been greater since this whole thing began in december 2023 so that means that the next eruption could be larger than previous ones in terms of volume it's most likely magma will surface again in that region we talked about, and that's what we've seen in six out of those seven eruptions. The one exception, of course, is the January 2024 eruption, which was further south, uh, closer to town. Uh, and then they just showed the Svartsengi GPS station, uh, and this is over the last um, maybe eight or nine months or so. So going from, actually, this is uh, going back to 2023. So the the intrusion shown in blue here, the red lines are the eruptions and so you can sort of track the northward eastward and the up upward motion of this particular gps station if you look at these trends here these very steep slopes following each eruption have gradually this line has gradually become less steep indicating that the magma uplift into um, this region and the uplift at the ground has slowed down a little bit. So here we are currently right here. We're higher in terms of elevation than we've ever been. Uh, the idea here is that each each intrusion and eruptive episode, each influx of magma makes the crust a little bit more elastic. It creates a little bit more space for the magma in the subsurface. And in so doing, it allows the elevation at the land surface to rise a bit higher 
between each episode. And so here we are. And the question, of course, is where's the threshold? Where does this actually um, trigger an eruptive event? And that, of course, is the big question in everyone's mind. Um, they talk about the seismic activity slowed a little bit. Um, let's see what else here. Um, yeah, fewer earthquakes in the lead up to eruptions. Warning time could be very short. And so let's look at some of that data then real quick here. So here's the last 24 hours um, and really not a whole lot to report. We've had uh, a whopping, looks like four earthquakes anywhere in this area with the biggest being this 1.4 earthquake about three kilometers depth but again not enough earthquakes here to really be uh, something to be concerned about but those earthquakes happening there that's the likely location that's the region we're expecting the eruption to take place but again the last 24 hours not much going on again if you're watching the data and following this stuff closely you may want to change your settings to something with a shorter time interval um, maybe three hours, two hours, depending on how often you check that. And then what you're looking for there is a, a rapid and tight clustering of data, both in sp space and time with respect to uh, the seismic activity going on there. If we look at the last week on the Reykjanes Peninsula, we see you know a couple quakes over here in the Krishavik system near Lake Klevravat. Um, and then closer to Grindavik, a few just to the west of town. We've seen those there before, but mainly very small magnitude quakes. These are uh, super tiny quakes down to, um, let's see, 0.2 in magnitude. And then we do see that cluster there over the past week in the most likely uh, area where we expect the vent to open up, somewhere in here. Um, so those quakes are happening, but just not seeing yet the sort of intense clustering uh, in time and space that we would expect to see right before the eruption. So there's your data for the last week with respect to earthquakes. Switching over to the GPS data, uh, we kind of looked at this a little bit in the Met Office update, but here's our Svartsingi station going from December into January. You can see this ebbing and flowing, but overall an upward trend in the elevation as we have inflation due to the magma in influx occurring in the subsurface and then these last few data points here it does look a bit like it's you know close to flatlining or at least there's a very slight upward trend there it definitely looks like it, it's slowed down a bit of course there's error bars here um open to interpretation but that's the data we have uh as we end march now and start heading into april and then finally looking at uh, a set of interferograms here we have this pass here from march 12th to march 23rd that does indeed show the uplift so not a lot of fringes here so it, it has slowed down quite a bit but there definitely is some uh, upward movement there that that corresponds to let's see that's the terra sar x i gotta look at my little cheat sheet here yeah each color band um is about 1.5 centimeters so that that purple to purple contour there um, you know a little under two centimeters of uplift during that 11 day period so what can i say um you know it's uh volcanology and earth volcano prediction is not an exact science um it's something that you know we try to learn from as best we can we are, aren't in the business of predicting volcanic eruptions we do try to forecast them within a time frame. And this one's kind of throwing us a curveball. This is the one that's sort of uh, defying our expectations of when we think an er the eruption is most likely to take place. But we'll continue to monitor and watch this as the week goes on. And as we roll into April, I'll be here to provide the best analysis and coverage of this as I can for you all. But I appreciate your time, your support of the channel. It's fun to just learn from each other and learn from the earth. And we'll just see how this goes. So until next time, take care and we'll see you then.